Hey guys, Chris from Revision Media. Today I'm going to be doing a full review of this SMTAV PTZ camera. It is 30x optical zoom, 1080p 60 frames per second, and it comes in as one of the cheapest PTZ cameras in 2023. Will it work for you and your setting? Well, let us dive into this. We're going to get into the weeds and we're going to tell you every single thing you need to know to make a decision on this camera for 2023. Stick around. At $709 US over on Amazon.com in 2023, this is a front runner for one of the cheapest PTZ cameras on the market that has all of these features that you really want to see in 2023. You've got a 30X optical zoom plus an additional 8X digital zoom. It's going to be great for those auditoriums that are long and you have a speaker far away. It has that 1080p 60 frames per second quality footage that still gets you by in 2023. 4K is fantastic, but most are not streaming at 4K, so 1080p will still get us by. It also has HDMI ports and Ethernet ports, as well as SDI ports, all the things that you like to see on these cameras. Let's go ahead and talk about what you get for connectivity options on the back of this SMTAV 30X PTZ camera. I'll start off with the ones you're probably never going to use. At least I don't know anybody that uses them for live streaming purposes, and I'm assuming that's why you're on our channel, because that's what we talk about here. You've got the RS-232 and the RS-485. These are just not your industry standards these days for live streaming purposes. They're an older standard technology that is most commonly used today for surveillance purposes, security purposes, and the likes. So we just want to dive into those. If you are using them or you know somebody that uses them for live streaming, send us a comment. We would love to see that set up and see what people are actually doing with that. But let me address the four that you are probably here to see and learn about. So you've got the LAN option, the HDMI option, the 3G SDI, and the USB 2.0 port. That is a 2.0, not a 3.0, and it is not capable of streaming. So that USB 2.0 port can record your footage onto a hard drive that is 2.0 USB compatible, okay? But it will not live stream. The three options that you will be able to use for live streaming are the LAN, HDMI, and the 3G SDI ports. They each have their pros and cons, and I'll address each of those now as quickly as I can. You have the LAN port, which is your basic Cat5, Cat6 ethernet cable. It needs to be data capable, but if it is data capable, then you're going to be able to use this port and you'll be able to send a very high definition, the full 1080p 60 frames per second that this camera is capable of. You'll be able to send that feed for 150, 300 feet, no problems. The other great thing about this port is that it offers power to the camera because this device is PoE compatible, meaning it is powered over ethernet, PoE. The HDMI port, is also capable of sending the full 1080p footage that is crisp and clean. However, it cannot get nearly as far as the LAN and it cannot power the device. It's the industry standard to say that you can send signals over HDMI 50 feet, but no more than that if you want it to be reliable. We would actually say for live streaming purposes so that you don't have any data loss, any problems, Staying less than 10 feet is probably ideal. The biggest pro for the HDMI is the functionality of capture cards that are on the market these days. Many, if not most, people who are live streaming are using some type of capture device that takes an HDMI signal and turns it into a USB output. So you would connect your HDMI cable from here directly into this HDMI port and ideally connect this into your computer or whatever your capture and streaming device is, and it's going to work flawlessly. The problem is when you're too far away, how do you connect this device? So as long as this is going to be close, HDMI is a wonderful solution, but if you aren't going to be close, the LAN is probably your preferred option, or you can do a combination between the HDMI and the SDI. So let's talk about SDI. This is a 3G SDI, which means it's capable of doing 1080p footage. It cannot do higher resolution than that. You would need to jump up to a 6G port to do that. But since this is a 1080p camera, 3G is perfectly suited for it. 
This can run 150, 300 feet as well, depending on the actual gauge of your SDI cable that you have. How people would commonly use this port, if you're getting this camera, you would use this port in conjunction with something like this. This is a Black Magic Design SDI to HDMI converter. If you're interested in something like this, we'll put a link to it in the description below. But what this device will let you do is it will let you actually use your SDI port, run that 150, 300 feet distance that you need to run, connect in, and then output a very short distance from your HDMI port here into your capture card at your streaming device. The last thing that I will address and talk about is this line in here and this line out. This line in is an audio line in. Although we have found in our practice and testing, this line in has never really been all that convenient or reliable for us. They do note that you can't use mic in for this. It needs to be some type of amplified powered audio source, like a line that's coming directly from a soundboard. This is a 3.5 millimeter jack, so it's very compatible with common standard cables. But for us, we just never really had a reliable use for this. We have a couple versions of this camera. In fact, we have several different PTZ cameras and we have found that the line in has kind of always given us fits and don't really see the application for it. Most people are not using this line in port for sound. Now, if you do want to use it, you will be able to sync that audio out through the LAN and through the HDMI. However, you will not be able to output it on the SDI. So if your hope is to have audio in and to use the SDI, you're just not going to be able to have that functionality there. The LAN will probably be your better option. The CVBS port is an old standard definition output that really is not going to be used for any live streaming purposes. All right, you have a few options for menus here with this camera. The first one that I'll talk about is what you can access via the remote control that comes standard with this camera. And the second option I'll get into is actually directly accessing the camera via an IP address. So I have the menu from the remote opened up here in front of you. You have your basic standard camera and image adjustments available like exposure, color image. You can change your PTZ settings, which is your pan, tilt, and zoom, speed and focus and things like that, noise reduction for image quality, your standard setup and communication setup options. Let me just very quickly show you what you, what, what you see under exposure. You have a manual setup, you have an auto setup, and a whole host of others. So I'll just cycle through here so you can see what kind of things are available to you. Manual setting is what we like to use because it allows us to adjust the f-stop and shutter speeds. And you also have some fine tuning with the gain and DRC protocols as well. So I'll go back to the color setting. You have a variety of white balance modes available to you. I'll just cycle through those so that you can see what this offers, indoor, outdoor lighting and auto setup as well. We like to use the color temp settings here they give us a lot of fine tuning functionality. I'll just kind of show you real quick. I can bump up some of the colors and you can see how subtle it is. It's not very, very sensitive to this end. I can change the colors very subtly, get it a little cooler or a little warmer. This is 4100 is basically the lighting I have in this room. So it's more true to color there. The image is going to allow you to either brighten or darken up with your luminance. And again, this is pixel uh, changes here. It's really changing those pixels. We got the contrast, the sharpness settings, and a host of other things that you are likely not as interested in uh, as you are with the luminous and contrast. Okay, so let me go ahead and go back. PTZ is going to give you that option to change the speed in which you zoom in and and how how much uh, panning happens each time you hit the remote. You have the option to turn your digital zoom on. We find that digital zoom is a little 
little choppy, so we don't like to use it too much, but you can see here it does, in fact, have that full 8x zoom capability. So go ahead and go back. Noise reduction, you have the 2D level and the 3D level to reduce those grains that you see in these pixels. It kind of has a blur effect. It's not our favorite option here, but we do tend to use the 3D level auto. It works okay. Uh, it, let me let me just show you. Maybe I can I can show you what would happen on the full level of 3D noise reduction. You can see as I go down. Maybe on screen you'll start to see that it gets a little bit more crisp and looks a little more focused. But when you turn it off, that's going to give you the highest level of focus. But also there's a bit of graininess in dark areas, which is what these cameras will struggle with in, in the long run is dark pixels because they have small sensors. Even though they work really well and they're, they're quality sensors, they do struggle with low light and you're going to need to clean up some noise in your images, most likely for a standard auditorium church setting. All right, so set up, again, your, your standard setup for what kind of video mode are you going to be using, HDMI, SDI, what kind of lens tie. All of this stuff is standard stuff that you have in here. Communication setup, again, the standard communication setup for what type of communications you're using, and then we can restore to default. Okay, so that wraps up the menu access via remote that does actually give you more functionality when you're wanting to actually change the color of your image, the quality of your footage. You, you have a little bit more control here via the remote than you do IP access, and I'll show you that IP right now. In front of you is the live view that's available via the menu once you've accessed your SMTAV PTZ camera via an IP address. If you're unfamiliar with accessing a PTZ camera via an IP address, be sure to check out our video where we give you a complete walkthrough of setting up and using your PTZ camera via an IP address. For now, let's jump into what you have available to you here in this menu. This, as I said, is the live view option, and you can see what the camera is actually bringing in for your live feed. You do have some basic level of functionality here where you can actually pan and tilt the camera. You can focus the camera. You can change the speeds and a variety of options, although you are fairly limited compared to using a controller, for example, which often is the reason why you would connect to a camera via IP address is to be able to set up your pan and tilt and zoom and functionality of your camera via a controller, which you can access under the network tab here. Again, we have a complete walkthrough on setting all of this up in another video. Be sure to check that out. But this is where you would access that information. Let's continue on walking you through. You've seen the live feed. You've seen the network. The video section is mostly where you're going to set up your stream information, the resolution and bit rate and frame rates of your footage. Image gives you a little bit of control over many of the settings that you had under the remote control menu access. There's only a handful of options, and they don't work nearly as well in our experience, so we never adjust this over here in this camera's menu. The audio, again, this is your basic level settings that you're going to want to set up before you start live streaming. The system, again, we'll go into this information when, when in the other video where we show you how to set up all of this via an IP address. But don't worry if you're concerned and thinking that you won't be able to live stream unless you know how to do all of this. You don't have to access the camera via the IP address and adjust anything. You most likely will be able to out of the box plug and play via HDMI or some other connection and be able to stream. This is only for more advanced setup functionality. If you just have one camera and that's all you need, you, you'll be just fine out of the box. Information is just going to give you basic information about the camera. If you're familiar with this camera and specifically the sensor size that is in a camera like this, then you know that 
These sensors are often placed in cameras like action cameras or cell phone cameras. And if you're familiar with either of those types of cameras, then you know that you're capable of getting stunning footage when you are outside. For an indoor setting, we really think this is the best possible setup. I have the camera about 15 feet away from me with lots of natural overhead lighting. I have a big window flooding the room with sunlight. And I also have a couple of studio lights that are directed at me as well. But even with this much light, I think you can see the shortcomings of this small sensor. You're still probably getting a very high quality looking uh, example here where you're able to make out uh, the parts in my hair and the whiskers on my face. However, what you are also likely seeing is a struggle between those highs and lows. You're always going to have this fine balance that's happening, whether you're in a room like this that's well lit or a room like what we were in with Billy just a moment ago where it's not as well lit, but it's still gonna struggle with those same balancing acts between the highs and the lows on screen. So you see some spots on my face and on my glasses that are struggling to not become blown out and in that struggle, you're going to see some darks in my shirt and the shadows in my mouth and the shadows around my eyes that are going to want to get too dark and the camera's gonna keep fighting it. And what you ultimately end up with is something that looks like a little muddied quality versus what you would see in your typical DSLR camera that has a much larger sensor. That being said, is this quality enough for you? especially in 2023 when 4K options are coming out. We can't make that decision for you, but we can give you some things to think about and we can give you our experience with this camera. We've been using it for a couple of years. We've been using this one and a couple others very similar to it, and they all perform very similarly to each other because they are sharing the same components, just branded differently. So this SMTAV camera and the others we're using, we'll link to those so that you can see which ones we're also using, but they all perform really well for us. We're able to stream at 1080p footage. We're able to get some pretty good crisp, clear images from the lighting scenario that we have in our church auditorium. And we also are able to control all of it with just one person. And that's one of the things we think you absolutely have to consider when you're thinking about a budget camera like this. For us, and from what we've seen, it's just not possible with your standard video camera that doesn't have this functionality. You would need somebody to be operating that camera and somebody operating the stream as well. And if you have multiple cameras, you would need to have multiple people operating those cameras panning and tilting and zooming them. In addition to that, you would probably need to purchase a couple of accessories like a tripod with fluid heads. You would likely need to purchase some type of controller that's going to allow them to zoom in and out as many of the camcorders that are out there in this price range offer some pretty wonky functionality for that zooming in and out. It's usually meant to be some type of handheld device where you're using your fingers on top of it or on the side of the camera to zoom in and out. And it's nearly impossible in our experience to zoom in and out of a camera like that without moving or shaking or rattling the camera, which is very noticeable in your feed. But maybe you're thinking, but wouldn't I be able to get a better sensor, a higher quality footage coming from a camcorder that doesn't have these features. In a camcorder, in this price range, you probably will get a slightly larger sensor. You're not going to get one that is large enough to where you will see a drastic difference in the footage that you'll get in your lighting scenarios. You would need to spend quite a bit more money in order to upgrade to about an inch sensor size. Once you get to an inch sensor, 
then what you see quality wise will blow this camera out of the water. So our recommendations are consider all of the use cases that you will have with a PTZ camera versus a camcorder and decide whether a little bit more of a quality advantage is enough to spend a potential a lot more on the camera and the setup. What about the 4K options and all of the other features that are coming out? 4K is here now, but for streaming purposes, it's not here. We, we are not streaming at 4K, people are not streaming at 4K, and people are not watching live streams at 4K. It's just not happening on a large scale. And in fact, many streaming services are not really offering a truly 4K setup, if a 4K setup at all. So 4K streaming is not here, and I would say it's not here for quite a while. So if you're worried about future-proofing your setup, don't worry about 4K at the moment, and don't think that your footage is going to be that much higher quality simply because it's recording at 4K. You still will be limited by the sensor size and the amount of information that the pixels will be able to draw in based on that image sensor size. If you're looking for a budget-friendly camera around the $700 price point, you really probably cannot find anything that's going to outperform this. You're certainly, once you start adding in the functionality of a 30 times optical zoom with the pan tilt zoom functionality, the ability to operate it with just one person, you, you really very quickly start to eliminate a lot of other options that even come close to this price point. For the last couple of years, it has suited us very well. We've been very happy with this camera. The footage that we're able to get is high quality. We think you would be pleased with it in most scenarios and most settings. It is a good quality PTZ camera and we can absolutely recommend it, especially for 2023 and especially for the $700 price point that it's currently running at.